Let me do a really quick recap of 23 and then we'll finish it up. Remember, this is not solving and the directions say solve if you look at the top of the page. So we saw that it wasn't set equal to zero, but before you can set equal to zero, you had to distribute. Then we subtract 15, subtract 15 from both sides because you have to do the opposite to move it over. There wasn't a GCF, so we did AC method factors of 60, reading it backwards, that subtract, oh, I can't believe I wrote 15. Good thing I did a, qu a quick recap. That was an error. Okay, so factors of 16, I saw the 15 and I wrote that. That subtract to 17 and we picked 3 and 20. This tells me it's going to be one of each sign. This tells me make the um, larger one positive. So I made 20 positive, 3 negative. I like to list my negative first, so I take this out. And in this place, I'm going to write negative 3x plus 20x. Then we found a GCF of x, took it out, and got 4x minus 3. And we brought down the plus, found a GCF of 5, divided each one by 5, got 4x minus 3. Our matching binomial, this is the third GCF, is 4x minus 3. When I crossed it out, I was left with x plus 5. And then I have to remember, this is not just factoring. The directions say solve. So if a times b equals 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. And so I solve these two to get my two solutions, which we'll put over here. So subtract 5, subtract 5, x equals negative 5 is my first solution. Add 3, add 3, 4x equals 3. So divide by 4, and I can see x equals 3 fourths is my second solution. I remember putting that exact same one on my test last semester. Hmm. Don't know if I'll find it in Alex, but I had that one on my paper pencil test. And then I asked for the x-intercepts for this one. So they would have been negative 5, 0 in parentheses and 3 fourths, 0 in parentheses because these are my x values and my y's are 0 for the x-intercepts. But this one just asks for solutions, so that is what they are. Two solutions, power of 2, so it matches. And then we do have one word problem on the test. So this one requires, okay, I'm all mixed up on my pins now. Black, green. So this one requires that we understand what the variables represent. So initial velocity of 64 feet per second. The height h, so this is height in feet. So h represents feet of the object t seconds after t seconds. So we're throwing an object up in the ground, up in the ground, up in the air. So t tells us how many seconds it's been in the air. H tells us what's the height after those many seconds. So when it says how high will the object be after two seconds, you have to decide are you going to put two in for H or two in for T. And it says seconds, so you can see this means T equals two. So then we go up into our e equation and I see one, two, three T's. Every T needs to be replaced by two. So H of two equals negative 16 times 2 squared plus 48 times 2. So I don't need parentheses since 2 is positive plus 160. <clears throat> so this is just notation, the height after 2 seconds. The rest we can do on the calculator, but we do have to make sure we label everything. After we're done, so we're ready. 
So we're going to type in negative 16 times 2 squared x squared, so that looks good, plus 48 times 2 plus 160. And you don't have to do it piece by piece. You can do it all at once. So 192. So this is H. So what are we going to label it? We look up here because that's why we have different colored pins, pencils, highlighters, so we can highlight it. So 192 feet. So if they asked us to write a sentence about it, we'd say after two seconds, the object, they never named it, they just called it an object, is 192 feet high. So depending on what they want, Alex could just want an answer with the units, or it could want a sentence, or it could want both like it did on the last test. So this would be the answer. This would be writing about what the answer represents. Okay, the second part says, when will the object hit the ground? Oh, hit the ground. So what does that mean? Hit the ground. This is such a common phrase you're going to see in math classes. So I need to know, is that height or is that seconds? Ground is not seconds. It's height. So how high is the ball when it hits the ground? H equals zero. So every time you see that, you have to know it means that. So they want to know when will the ball's height be zero. So what we're going to do is go up here and replace height with zero. Not t with zero, that's time. Height. So it's going to look like this. And you can guess what most students do wrong on this. They plug zero in for t. That means how high is the ball after zero seconds. That's not what the problem's asking for. They want to know when will the height be zero. And you should maybe write that here so you understand why you're making h zero. Height is zero. That's what that means when you hit the ground and when you plug zero in for h. So I go up there, this all becomes zero, and I set it equal to this. And the one thing I have noticed about problems in this chapter is they Almost all the word problems have a GCF. So that's the biggest hint I can give you for the test. When you get this word problem, look for a GCF. Don't do AC method with these gigantic numbers. 16 times 3 is 48. 16 times 10 is 160. And it has a negative leading coefficient. So we learned way back in 4.5 in the GCF section that if the leading coefficient's negative, not only do you take out the GCF, you take out a negative GCF. So negative 16 is my GCF. Here's another place students make errors. They don't pay attention to their signs. They just divide everything by 16 instead of negative 16. That's going to change every one of the signs by dividing by a negative. So this is going to turn into positive 1t squared, which is just t squared. This is going to be negative 3t. And this is going to be negative 10. So look at that. I have a double bubble. Even though that problem looked monstrous, I can go right to my answer. My leading coefficient's now 1, so it's just a simple little double bubble. So we know the signs are going to be different because that is a negative, and the only way to get a negative is a positive times a negative, and we know the larger number needs to be negative. So let's go ahead and put our t plus, t minus stuff in. So t plus t minus, because it says the signs are different. We're looking for factors of 10. 
that subtract a 3, so doing 5 it is. And according to this, the larger number has to be negative. So 2 is positive, 5 is negative. And so I place the 2 here with the plus sign and the 5 with the minus. But remember, this is a solving problem. They want to know when. That means give them a number after 3 seconds, after 10 seconds, after 4 seconds. So we have to continue solving. And remember, when we solve, if a times b times c equals 0, then either a is 0, the first factor, or b is 0, the second factor, or c is 0, the third factor, which is t minus 5. So negative 16 can never equal 0, so throw that out. Subtract 2, subtract 2, so we get t equals negative 2. Remember how I told you on quadratics, generally one solution makes sense and one does not. So t is time in seconds. Can I have negative 2 seconds? No. So that one doesn't make sense. So this one's never true. 16 never equals 0. This one is not possible because seconds have to be positive. So hopefully this one will give us our answer. And it looks like it will. So my answer is after 5 seconds. It will hit the ground. Oh, I'm running out of room, aren't I? Okay, we'll go down here. Hopefully you guys can still read that. So that would be my answer. So the first one is never true. 16 never can equal 0. The second one came up negative, so I had to throw it out because time is positive. We can't go backwards in time. So after five seconds, we only had one positive answer. After five seconds, the object or it will hit the ground. So that means it's going to go up. And then after five seconds, it's going to be back down on the ground. So at zero seconds, it will be on the ground. And at five seconds, it will be on the ground. Okay, I'm going to stop this one now because the back page is going to take more than two and a half minutes and I might as well put them on the same video. So I'm just going to stop this one here and I'll pick up on number 25 A and B in the next video.